polling for Kamala Harris, the vice president, appears to be sliding. New polling data released right before the Democrat National Convention is showing Kamala Harris trailing in three separate polls. First, she's trailing to Donald Trump by one point in Pennsylvania, and then two points in Georgia as well. This according to an AARP research survey. And finally, there's another poll by CNBC, which is showing that Harris is trailing Donald Trump by two points nationally. But do not fret, my friends, if you are a supporter of Kamala Harris. The pollsters who conducted these polls are still saying that Harris is experiencing momentum and enthusiasm for her campaign, even if she's trailing Donald Trump. You know, ever since Biden was pushed out of the race, out of his rightful place as the Democrat Party nominee, because, you know, his brain stopped working right, the media has gone full court press in their nonstop fluff pieces of Kamala Harris. It's all intended to shore up the idea that the vice president, who is perhaps the most despised uh, vice president in modern history, was suddenly now beloved by the American people. It was as if all of her stupidity, all of her unlikability just washed away when she became the new nominee. And Kamala Harris is now so brat. Regardless of any of this, my friends, Kamala is still Kamala. And no matter how much the mainstream media is pushing the idea that she is beloved, and no matter how often we hear stories about her positive polling data, she just can't stop shooting herself in the foot. As president, I will take on the high costs that matter most to most Americans. That's good. Like the cost of food. Mm -hmm. We all know that prices went up during the pandemic when the supply chains shut down and failed. Okay. But our supply chains have now improved. Ooh, that's good. And prices are still too high. What? A, lo a loaf of bread cost 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. That's a problem. Ground beef is up almost 50%. What? What the f Now, the feeling on the ground also doesn't seem to match up with what the pollsters are trying to tell us. For example, the left has been pushing hard the idea that Kamala Harris, the formerly Indian identifying politician, is now just black, and that because of her black heritage, the black community should and would vote for her as one, as a monolith. The idea, of course, is to paint her with the Obama brush. But let's be honest with ourselves, Kamala Harris is no Obama. She doesn't have any ability to command a crowd the way that he did, say, back in 2008. No, despite the media's best attempt to brand her as the best, most amazing candidate since sliced bread, the cracks just keep on coming. For example, ABC host Martha Raddatz went man on the street to try and rustle up some evidence that the black community was lockstep behind the vice president and instead got a face full of, oops, take a look. While our polls show support from black voters has swung 12 points in Harris's favor. I'm leaning more towards Kamala. Melody Davey has not bought in. Trump's rhetoric has clearly had an effect on her in an astonishing way. Have you decided who you want to vote for? Um, uh, honestly, no. Um, I'm leaning towards Trump. And why is that? Um, a lot of the stuff Kamala says is kind of like what Trump has said, like no taxes on tips was something that was kind of reiterated by Trump beforehand. Um, she's just kind of been caught up in a lot of uh, lies. Like what? Um, I think lying about her heritage was one of them. Um, she's, Do you think she lied about her heritage? Yeah, I believe she's just Indian. I don't think she's black. She's, she is always identified as black. Uh, she is half Indian. Well, I think that's something we can definitely agree to disagree on. And there was... <laughs> you can tell um, <laughs> that did not go as planned. Right. And it's not just Martha. Here's Don Lemon, formerly known as the dumbest man on television, finding out that the black community are not all just going to follow Kamala Harris into the ground. We're here in Jersey, Atlantic City. Who do you support? Trump. I, I plead the fifth. Trump for the win. But tell me why. I can't really call that right now, but I just feel like she's not good for president. She's good vice, but not for the actual lead role for the country. Does it have anything to do with being a woman? No. Mm-mm. 
Oh, he no, really doesn't like that like answer. Women, mm, nah, you're not gonna give me that. Your money's on Harris. Yeah. Who do you want? Trump. Why don't you like Harris? Oh, she doesn't have any experience. Uh, She's she the vice president. Five. She's a she, senator. Yeah, no, no experience. No, no, no. <laughs> she had no experience. Well, I want Donald Trump. I just feel we need somebody that has a stronger background with the military and the world in general. She was a prosecutor and an attorney general and a senator and a vice president. You're in a gambling town. Who's your money on? I'm going to support the Democratic Party, but, I mean, Trump looked like he, he got it in the bag right now. Four years ago, it was a lot better. I made a lot more money than I do now. I know you feel that way, mm-hmm. but that's not actually what the record shows. The economy is actually <laughs> oh, better under God, Biden. Lemon. No, I'm serious. What, what, that's what the facts are. Okay, you know what? No, 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 that's not because I watched CNN. Trump or Harris? Trump. That's who's going to win. That's who's going to win. Who do you support? I support Trump. I got to get out of Atlantic City. Where are we going to next? Poor old Don Lemon. Now, my friends, something is happening behind the scenes. I cannot remember the last time a major left wing news organization has attacked a leading Democrat politician. But CNN, for whatever reason, has begun attacking Kamala Harris on their platform. They have bashed her proposed economic policies that she announced. You know, the one where she wanted to bring Soviet style price controls to the U.S. economy, which would guarantee an economic collapse. And what's amazing is that CNN is actually pointing this out. It seems that there's something about the Harris campaign that is either annoying the media so much that they are allowing themselves to attack her, or perhaps she is weaker than they are letting on, and they know it, and at least want some objectivity to point to later. I can't really say. But here's a couple of examples of CNN just bashing Kamala Harris. I don't actually care who wins the White House. What I care about what the policy is, because I'm an investor. I have to put capital to work regardless of in the White House. So I really, really care about what Harris says and what Trump says about potential policy. Let's take her price gouging idea first. Uh, They tried that in Venezuela, Cuba, North Korea, the USSR. No, that's not going to work. It's impossible to understand how a corporation would set pricing based on gouging. What does that even mean? That's why it's being ridiculed. Two things. I think, number one, she had took a lot of far left positions during her first run in 2019 and 2020. She has, you know, temporarily kind of moderated these through some anonymous quotes from aid saying, well, she doesn't really want to ban fracking anymore. She doesn't want to do this, doesn't want to do that. This new program that she's kind of doing is pretty far left, $25,000, price controls, essentially. That's number one. But the other thing is, you know, kind of conveniently forgot she was vice president for the last four years when a lot of the housing market crisis was at its worst, uh, when inflation was at its worst. So there's a lot of memory holding that. Um, but look, when it comes to the 25K, I mean, you just added $25,000 into every price in, in, in uh, onto every home price in the country. Because if you're giving that away essentially for free, people will add it into the price. Catherine, I hear, I read your piece and, and I heard you just mention it. The federal ban on price gouging for groceries. You are skeptical of this. Why? Well, first of all, nobody can explain what price gouging means. It's it's like that old line about pornography. I know it when I see it uh, in the sense that what does it mean to have an excessive price or an excessive pro- profit margin? That seems to be shorthand for a price or a profit margin that that bugs me. If you look at the legislation that, as I mentioned, is already in the Senate, um, led by Senator Senate Warren uh, and Senator Bob Casey and, and a slew of others, the particular way that this is written, which is likely to be the template for any proposal that Harris would eventually um, embrace, is especially bad in that it just bans excessive prices and says that the Federal Trade Commission can use any metric it deems appropriate to decide what that what that would would mean, um, which basically says, Hello, like, communism. it's not going to be markets. It's not going to be supply and demand that's uh, determining how much your grocery store charges you for for milk or for eggs. It's going to be some bureaucrat in D.C., which seems like totally unworkable, first of all, for the FTC to be side. You get the flavor there. And it's not just Kamala Harris either. And they're also going after Tim Waltz. Here's an example. Again, this is CNN. Why arrest? This is a story about uh, someone getting a DUI arrest and then his campaign repeatedly misleading and giving false statements to the public about it. So let's just go to the facts of that 1995 arrest first, okay? Waltz was speeding over 95 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. He failed 
a field sobriety test that was administered by a state trooper. He then admitted in court that he had been drinking. He was transported to a local hospital for a blood test uh, that showed he had a blood alcohol level of 0.128, and that was above the state legal limit. Uh, he then took a plea deal where he pled guilty to a reckless driving charge. Now, those are the facts. Uh, that's from police records. That's from court records. And, and that all is, is completely undisputed. So let's fast forward to 2006. He's in a tight congressional race. He is running for Congress. Uh, this was a Republican-held district that he was trying to flip. And then a local Republican blog puts up that he had this arrest for drunk driving. Now, I'm going to give you sort of the bullets of what his campaign said about that. They, The campaign setting walls claimed that he had not been drinking and driving. They attributed his failed field sobriety test to a uh, hearing loss from his time in the National Guard, Oops. not alcohol. The, came, the campaign falsely said that he drove himself to the station, that he was allowed to drive, drive home. They said, they said the DUI charges were dropped because they were unfounded. Uh, and the campaign even faulted uh, this trooper uh, for saying that he didn't realize that Walls had hearing impairment. They claimed a judge. Right. So so there you go. There's CNN just bashing away. And this is not something that we see very often. This is not something that we typically see from the mainstream media. They usually are all on board protecting the Democrat candidates, especially those that are leading. So we are living in strange times, my friends. And I suspect it's only going to get stranger. And when we take a look at the Democratic National Convention, it could get a lot crazier here this week. So we're just going to have to keep an eye on that. And of course, we will. From the Topical Umbrella, I am Adrian. Thanks for watching, my friends. I will see you all in the next video.